This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. There's a lot of people in the world today. I don't think I have responsibility for my emotions. You don't understand. The reason why I got mad and shot them because they did that. So you just, you just let me go free. And, and they don't see themselves as being responsible for it. They, they see emotion, negative emotions as a, as a response to the negative circumstance. And I am telling you, it's a choice. Not just a response, it's a choice. The 2020 Ministers and Leaders Conference is here, making adjustments for the new age. Grace is a person, his name is Jesus, and that is the foundation that you build on. A lot of the weight on carrying ministry or what people think or where things are coming from for the ministry of the heart is released. That burden is lifted. Do not miss this revelation on making adjustments for the new age. Register now and secure your seat today. Now, emotions were given to us for our enjoyment. Emotions were given and they are meant for our enjoyment. We were created in God's image and part of that likeness of God is emotions. You know, God, God is a God who has emotions. It's all through the Bible. And as we were created in God's image, uh, Genesis 1:31. go there, Genesis 1:31. We're created in God's image. Look at what Genesis 131 has to say about his creation. He said, and God saw everything that he had made, that includes us, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So everything that God made was very good. He made everything in his image, which means also where, his, where emotions are concerned. So emotions were created to be good. If everything that God created was good, then those emotions that we have been given by God in the likeness of God, think of that now, we've been given emotions in the likeness of God, these emotions are good. They were given to us to, for enjoyment. Now, we've got to find hope for emotional stability. That's the key. The emotions are good. They were designed to be good. It is designed for our enjoyment. In a moment, we're going to switch over and show you why they're not so good in a lot of places. But one of the things that we see very clearly in the church, we see the difference between people trying to cope with emotions, the church teaching people to cope with depression, cope with these different feelings, and not teaching them how to control these emotions. Uh, we're part of the reason why a lot of people in the church don't think you can control your emotions. You know, as a, as a, as a former therapist, I, we used to teach you to cope with certain things. And even entering to the ministry, teaching people how to cope with certain things. No, no, no. We want to move from coping to controlling these things. If God gave you these emotions, and these emotions are a, a, a very duplication of God himself and emotions he possessed, he wants us to control them to have authority over our emotions and not just to cope with our emotions. You know, if I were to have people to stand up on a Sunday morning and ask the question, how many of you here today uh, have dealt with or dealing with depression and you need prayer for that? You might find 80, 85, 90% of the church would stand up dealing with that situation. But, you know, that's not kind of bought up in church. And what we need to understand is that mental and emotional health is a part of what Jesus came to bring us. A part of what Jesus came to deal with us on the cross and shed his blood is so we can have mental and emotional health. And let's look at our society right now. I mean, look at a lot of things that are going on. A lot of things, we have a mental health issue in our country today. And you know, the church should be the place where we're giving answers to that. 
Well, why not? Because you got a lot of mental health issues in the pulpit, and you got mental health and emotional issues in the church. And if we don't start talking about it, there won't be faith to begin to deal with that. But look what he says in Isaiah 26 and verse 3, you know, speaking of this fact that it is the will of God. Jesus came to bring us emotional and mental health. That's a part of it. We, we, preached about, we preach about Jesus making us healthy in our physical bodies, okay? And, and we're talking about prospering in our soul. Now we're talking about being healthy in our emotions. Isaiah 26 and 3, and he says, Thou will keep him, listen to what he says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Well, peace is an emotion, isn't it? And you can live in a state of emotional peace. Notice the Scripture says, I'll keep you in perfect peace. That, that's just, that's hopeful right there. That, that just lets you know that there is a way through God for us to, to enter into a state of perfect peace. I'll say out loud, say, I, I receive a, a, a stability in my emotions. I receive stability in my emotions. And I receive perfect peace. And I receive perfect peace. Now, he, he tells us here how to do that. Thou keep him in perfect peace. He says, wherever your mind is stayed, that's going to be big tonight. Wherever your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, all of that is going to determine where your emotions are going to be. What are your thoughts? If, you're, if your mind is on Jesus, your mind is on the Word of God, then, you know, you're going to be able to govern those thoughts. Now, I, I want to show you something. That, just a little foundation. I want to show you something that we're going to deal with tonight. It's quite fast, fascinating to me when I saw this. But let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And, and, and again, we're dealing with this issue of can I really control my emotions or are, they, are, or are emotions just a response to negative situations? And I don't have, I can't control it. You know, do I, do I not have a choice in, 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 in deciding what kind of emotions are in my life? Well, look at this. This is pretty fascinating. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, here it is a section where they're talking about how God would judge sin and, you know, the things that he would do. And in Deuteronomy 28, verse 40, Cisco will start at verse 46 through 48. Deuteronomy 28, uh, actually, let's look at 45. Deuteronomy 28, 45, and let's go through 48. Now, listen to this carefully. He says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee, and they're going to overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes uh, which he commanded. Now listen to this now. In the old covenant, God judged sin harshly. He judged sin harshly. But in the new covenant, uh, our judgment has been placed upon Jesus Christ. So even though your behavior is not always right, the judgment comes on Jesus Christ. You have to get that. God's not judging your sins harshly today like he did in the Old Testament. Why? Because Jesus has been judged for all of our sins. That's a, that's a powerful thing. That's, that's something to say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we still benefit in seeing what the Lord judged as a wrong type of conduct. So this is going to kind of catch you off guard a little bit. This is amazing. Look at verse 46 now. So, we know he judges sin. He's in the old covenant now, and he's judging sin. And let's check out what he's about to judge. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, 46, he says, And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. I mean, you know, joyfulness is an emotion. Gladness is an emotion. He's getting ready to judge them because they didn't serve him with the emotion of gladness and joy for all the things that he'd done. Wow. Look at the next verse. He says, Therefore shall thou serve thine enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And notice, he is judging them 
because they did not serve God with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things that he had given them. He's judging them because they didn't respond correctly in their emotions. Now think about this for a moment. He, he, he's, he's come before these guys and he's saying, listen, you know, most people look at emotions as being like optional. They look at it as just like, you know, it's just something that happens. I, I want to I take you down a little pro progression. I want you to think about it. A bad circumstances will show up in your life. Most, pe most people believe that if something negative happens, there must be a negative emotion to correspond with that negative circumstance. That's what most people think. Something negative happens, then a negative emotion must correspond with that negative circumstance. They see emotions as simply as, as a response and not a choice. So the, a bad negative circumstance happened, most people see, well, bad circumstance, bad emotions, and that's a response to the bad circumstances, and they don't see it as being a choice. They don't see it as you can choose how you feel even though the circumstance is negative. A negative circumstance does not, does not necessarily mean you have to have negative emotions to correspond with that negative circumstance. But most people think that. So to them, emotions are not something they have any authority or control over. And that's true with most people. They don't think you have authority or control over your emotions. Uh, they feel like, well, you know, therefore they don't have any responsibility for their, for their emotions. And, and there's a lot of people in the world today. I don't think I have responsibility for my emotions. You don't understand. The reason why I got mad and shot them because they did that. So you just, you just let me go free. And, and they don't see themselves as being responsible for it. They, they see emotion, negative emotions as a, as a response to the negative circumstance. And I am telling you, it's a choice. Okay. Not just a response, it's a choice. And so what happens in the current day thinking, here's the current day thinking, here's our current day thinking, and it is this, that emotions are just something that happens. Emotions are just something that happens. It, it, it based on, it's based on circumstance, but emotions just happen. That is a gigantic deception. You, you gotta get that out of your head. Emotions don't just happen. You are a free moral agent, and you can choose uh, how and, and, and you, you want your, your emotions to be in the midst of a negative situation. But as long as you think that the negative circumstance means that you have to have a negative emotion to correspond with it, it it's going to rule. It, no wonder the devil wants to use emotions to, to take you where he wants you to go. Because you, first of all, don't think you have any authority, or let me put it like this, you don't think you have control over how you feel. And you do. You don't think you have control over how you feel, and you do have control over how you feel. And, and like I said before, most people look at these emotions as being optional, just something that happens, and yet that cannot be true. That cannot be true because of what we just read because if you didn't have any control over your emotions, and if you didn't have any authority over your feelings, then it would not be right for God to judge these people of not responding with the right emotion if they didn't have control over it. For him to just, to, to judge them and to allow this curse to come on them because they didn't respond right emotionally, because they didn't respond with joy, and gladness because of what God has done. Re please realize something. They were being cursed because they had the wrong emotional response. God was saying, you're supposed to respond to me with joy and gladness because of all the good things that I've done unto you. And he says, because you didn't do it, which means that's a choice. He's expecting for you to choose to respond this way, which means it's a choice. And he says, because it is a choice and you didn't choose to honor me with your emotions the right way, I am going to judge you and curse you for it. Now, of course, he will not do that under the new covenant, but under the old covenant, they were judged and cursed. You saw what happened to them because they didn't respond to God correctly emotionally. And I'm telling you, 
because of just this right here. There is no way you can, 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 can justify God cursing these people if they didn't have a choice to choose the type of emotion they were supposed to have regardless of the circumstance that came. So, before I go on, turn to your neighbor and tell them to wake up because we're going to get into this, man. <laughs> Amen? You got you to stay up on this. I can't be hollering and screaming at you, messing my voice up, trying to keep you awake. God, can, God uh, that you cannot allow your emotions to control you. You're supposed to control your emotions. But if you don't think you have any control of your emotions, guess what happens? They end up controlling you. And you end up telling people, well, my emotions, I did this because that happened, and, and so I felt this way. You, you got, you, let me tell you, the devil will eat your lunch if you do not come to the place of realizing that your emotions are not just a response to a, a negative situation. Your emotions are something that God gave you that you have authority over. Say out loud, I have authority over how I feel. Say out loud, I can control how I feel. All right, look at this. Go to John chapter 14 and verse 1. John chapter 14 and verse 1. Look at what he says here. You not having authority over your emotions is a lie. It's a lie. Look what he says here. Let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> How are you even going to tell me this if, unless you understand that I have the power and authority in the middle of trouble to not be troubled? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So again, there's no way God would be justified in even asking us to let not our heart be troubled. See, here's Jesus getting ready to go to the cross. He knows his disciples are going to go through a lot of trouble, and he begins to warn them. He says, guys, you know, trouble's coming. And, and this, is, this was not a suggestion. This was a command. Let not your heart be troubled, is what he was telling them. It was a command. How do you command somebody to take authority over your emotions if you did not have control over your emotions. And he commands them to do it. Of course, they didn't do it. They were full of trouble. He had to eventually come and minister to them, get them all healed up. But the fact of the matter is they could have. And just because trouble comes, that's the circumstance, doesn't mean you have to respond with an equal negative emotion to match that circumstance. I wrote a book, I think I wrote a book, yeah, I did. I wrote a book, how, how something about trouble your trouble. Yeah, how to trouble your trouble. I, 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 knew even, I, I knew even back then that just because you're in trouble, you don't have to be troubled by your trouble because you had authority over your emotions. And you have got, you know, many people think, well, you know, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. It doesn't matter the trouble you've seen. You have authority of your emotions. You can decide how, the, the type of emotions you're going to have in the midst of those troubles. Let me show you this again. Uh, go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. It is a lie for anybody to tell you that you don't have control over your emotions. That is a lie. You control how you feel. You control how you feel. You need to let yourself know that because most of the time when you're going off, you're going off because you don't think you have any control. You have a control. You, you know, my wife says something that was so amazing. She says, you determine how people treat you. He says, you decide how people treat you. It's not even the fact sometimes that people are mean to you. You decide how people treat you, and you decide how you want to be treated. If you're going to stand there and just be disrespected, that's your decision. I don't stand in the place somebody disrespect me. They're they, they, they going to have to talk to themselves. I got to go. Now, you can be cussing, but you're going to be cussing somebody else out because I'm gone. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. I've set blessings and cursings. Therefore, what did he say? Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live and prosper. This is simply talking about this wonderful gift to be a free moral agent 
and to make a choice that you and I can choose. You can make a choice. We do have authority over our emotions through Jesus Christ, and it is time to walk in that authority and take control of our feelings. That is authority you have. Take control of your feelings. Turn to two people and say, take control of your feelings. Is everybody with me so far? So you, you, can, you can sit in any kind of situation and just feel a certain way and just let that feeling torment you, dominate you, create even more emotions to go along with that. And you'd be surprised how much defeat you walk in just by sitting at home and, uh, and allowing those negative feelings to minister to you. You'd be surprised. By the time you walk out, better not nobody say nothing to you because you're already prompt and ready to respond because you wouldn't take control over how you feel. Please listen to all of this. I'm, I've, I've got to set this foundation up in order for you to understand where I'm going. Now, what about the natural versus the supernatural, where we're talking about where emotions are concerned? You can bring your emotions under spiritual dominion. You can bring your emotions under the spiritual dominion of Jesus Christ rather than under the physical dominion of the world. Now, you've got to choose. Are, are my emotions going to be bought under the spiritual dominion or are my emotions going to be bought under the dominion of the world? Now, I don't believe that God intends for us to live by what the natural realm dictates. I don't believe God wants us to live by the circumstances that show up in our lives on a daily basis. And most of the time, the circumstance is not the problem. How you respond, your feelings and your emotions become a bigger problem than the circumstance. And so, in the natural, there's this thing called humanism. I know you've heard of it that says we all have the answer within ourselves. We don't need God. That's the humanistic view, that man in his self as a human can do anything, and he has the answers on the inside of himself. They don't think that the answer to our problems is in the spiritual part of us, because most of them don't know there's a spiritual part of us. And that's where the answers are, the answers in the, in the area where the spiritual part of us. But they think that it's just in the mental and the emotional part. And psychologists will deal with you in those two realms, your mental and emotional part. They think that's where the answer is, but the answer to a lot of issues are right there in your spirit where wisdom grows. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. It's right there where wisdom grows, not just in your mental and your emotions, but we have something that the world doesn't have, the understanding that we have power in our spirit. And if we submit our emotions to the spiritual realm, to the supernatural realm rather than submitting our emotions to the natural realm. See, if you submit your emotions, basically you're saying such and such, such and so fail like that, so it's all right for me to feel like that. I'm just like everybody else. Or you can say, no, that's not what Jesus says. I'm going to submit my emotions to the Word of God and the Spirit of God, and I'm going to not allow my emotions to dominate me in this natural world. Genesis 1, 26 says, and God said, let us make man in our what? Image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over fish of the sea, fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. He created male and female. He created them. We were not created to stand alone. He created them. Now, I'm mentioning that because you got to be careful when you're trying to deal with your emotions that you don't decide that, well, I don't need anybody. I've been hurt by too many people. I've been disappointed by too many people, so I'm going to resign myself from relationships and I'm going to figure it out myself. We were created to be together with somebody. When you do that, you're going to miss out on one of the greatest gifts that God wants to give you, and that is the awesome stuff that comes from relationships. And that also includes the ability to mature and to grow and to recognize things about yourself that you would not be able to recognize except you were in a relationship with somebody else. And uh, no man's an island, that's a true statement, not a scripture, but I do agree with it 100% that uh, the objective is not to become emotionless and then hide behind scripture as if you don't have issues. You're going to have an issue. You've got to learn. See, you don't, you don't want to get in a place where you're so by yourself that you become so self-centered and you use your hurts and your pains as an excuse to not develop relationships with people. That's not why God created us. We are the body of Christ and we should have a connection and relationship 
with somebody. Are your emotions controlling your life? Many people think that their emotions cannot be controlled. As a Christian, not only can you help how you feel, but you have, God has equipped you and provided for you the necessary resources to help you control, harness, and take charge of those negative feelings in your life. If you're not in control of your emotions, then you're not in control of your life. You know, you gotta watch what you say, everything that comes out of our mouth too. So the things that's normally going on in our life is as a result of us speaking the wrong way. I'm not saying those negative feelings won't come. I'm just saying when they, they do come, you can neutralize them, control them, harness them, and not let them lead you in a direction that's gonna be destructive to your life. Get the Secret to Stable Emotions seven message series for a love gift of $40 or more. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. Men, it's our time to rise to another level at the 2020 Mentality Conference. Join us online September 11th and 12th for two power-packed days with three dynamic speakers. When you see him, you will see his righteousness. When you see his righteousness, you will see your sin, and it will leave you no other choice but to put your faith in the finished works of Christ. See, the more that you become you, the less things you entertain because you are on a mission. When you find the, the will of God for your life, it's the greatest, most peaceful adventure that you'll ever have. We will get raw and uncut and receive real life resolutions at the 2020 Mentality Conference. You don't want to miss out on this revival of manhood. Mark your calendars and register now at creflodollarministries.org. We want to be sure we are living according to what God has taught us about giving. And we understand that giving and receiving is a spiritual law. It's a reflex of God's love. And I'm so glad that Taff and I begin to understand how to walk in this principle. But we give not out of necessity. We give out of a cheerful heart. We give because we're grateful and we're thankful to what God has done. You know, I, I want you to pray about uh, becoming a giver into Creflo Dollar Ministries today. And if this ministry has blessed you in any way, consider sowing a seed of any amount and we will greatly appreciate it. Thank you in advance for your support and God bless you. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit creflodollarministries.org today. God bless you. Your generosity allows us to make a difference in the lives of people all over the world. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.